Hey everyone, I'm Will Schick, Director of Business Development for Privateer Press, and I'm here to teach you everything you need to know to be able to survive in our new Bodgers game, Zombies Keep Out. In Zombies Keep Out, the Goblin Bodgers find themselves in a whole new sort of pickle when the workshop comes under attack by an army of the living dead. Fighting back in the best way they know how, the Goblin Bodgers barricade the workshop and frantically tinker with any parts they can scrounge up. Only by assembling a dizzying array of outlandish contraptions can they hope to turn the tide of the zombie apocalypse. Zombies Keep Out is a cooperative board game for one to six players, during which players work together to repel the zombie invasion. To succeed, they must build three defensive contraptions in the Bodger's workshop before the zombies either destroy three of their devices or breach the workshop door. At the beginning of a turn, a player will first resolve the zombies close in step by drawing a card from the deck of terrible things. Terrible things include additional zombies showing up, existing zombies shambling towards the workshop, or even zombie bites. After the zombies close in, the player will resolve the bodge portion of their turn. Bodge actions include scrounging for new parts, bodging parts onto contraptions according to the blueprints, pushing the button on completed contraptions, defending against the zombie horde, or reinforcing the workshop's barricades. The Zombies Keep Out game board represents the Bodger's workshop as well as the surrounding junkyard. The workshop itself is split into five location spaces. The cellar, a window, the door, another window, and the balcony. The columns in front of these five spaces are sometimes referred to as the cellar column, window columns, door column, and balcony column. The row of spaces in front of the workshop is referred to as the top row. When a zombie is in the top row of the game board, it will attack the corresponding location the next time it would move closer to the workshop. The row of spaces farthest from the workshop is referred to as the back row. Spaces on the game board have color-coded arrows as a reminder of how the different colors of zombie figures move when they shamble. To set up for a game of Zombies Keep Out, first shuffle the deck of terrible things and the deck of park cards and place them beside the game board. If either of these decks runs out of cards during the course of the game, shuffle the corresponding discard pile to create a new deck. Next, randomly select five contraption cards and place one contraption beside each location with the blueprint side facing up. Place one progress token on the start space of each of the five selected contraptions, and return the other ten contraption cards to the game box. You will not use them during the game. Place the zombie figures in the zombie pool area of the board, and place the bite tokens within easy reach of all players. Next, place the barricade tokens on each location. Add 10 barricades to the door, add 8 to both the balcony and the cellar, add 6 barricades to each window. Then, place zombies from the zombie pool on the game board as follows. Place one yellow creeper zombie in each of the back two rows of the cellar column. Place one gray runner zombie in each of the back two rows of both window columns. Place one red brute zombie in each of the back two rows of the door column, and place one blue leaper in each of the back two rows of the balcony column. Lastly, deal part cards to each player based on the number of players. There is no limit to the number of cards a player can have in hand during the game. These numbers only set the starting hand for each player. The first player to take a turn is the player most prepared for a real life zombie attack. After that player's turn, play proceeds clockwise around the table. Players continue to take turns until the group wins the game by completing three contraptions, or the zombies defeat them by destroying three contraptions or by breaching the door of the workshop. Each turn has two parts, zombies close in and bodge. The first thing a player must do during the zombies close in step is draw a card from the deck of terrible things. Choose one of the three terrible options and do what it says. Note that some cards options are much worse than other cards. While resolving a Terrible Things card, do not show the other players what the card says. They'll know which terrible thing you chose, but they won't know the options you did not choose. One of the most common terrible things is the instruction to add zombies to the board. Adding zombies to the board simply means taking one of the zombie figures from the zombie pool and placing it in any space on the board. Some instructions will require a specific type of zombie, like a leaper, a runner, creeper, or brute or will require the player to put the zombies in specific rows or columns of the board. Another very common type of terrible thing is the instruction for zombies to shamble, and each zombie shambles differently. When a zombie shambles, it will move one space, including diagonally, as indicated by the arrow corresponding to its color. Creeper zombies move towards the cellar, brute zombies move towards the door, leaper zombies move toward the balcony, Runner zombies always move straight toward the workshop. 
When moving zombies that shamble, move the zombies in the lowest numbered space first and progress to the highest numbered space. This will ensure that you do not accidentally move a zombie twice or forget to move a zombie. If there are more than three zombies in any space, the zombies start shoving each other. Beginning with the lowest numbered space with more than three zombies, shamble zombies in that space until it contains no more than three zombies. Repeat this process for each space with more than three zombies in number order. After resolving the zombies shoving each other in the highest numbered space, there may be new spaces with more than three zombies. Repeat the shoving process until no space contains more than three zombies. If a terrible thing includes two instructions, resolve all shoving before resolving the second instruction. For example, if the terrible thing says, all runners shamble, then all runners shamble again, first shamble the runners, then resolve shoving, then shamble the runners a second time, and then resolve shoving again. If a zombie shambles while it is in the front row, it will smash into the barricades at that location. Remove one barricade token from that location, and then remove the zombie from the board, placing it back in the zombie pool. There are three exceptions. If a creeper smashes into the cellar, remove two barricade tokens before removing the creeper. If a brute smashes into the door, remove two barricade tokens before removing the brute. If a leaper smashes into the balcony, remove two barricade tokens before removing the leaper. If the last barricade token is removed from a location, an overrun occurs. Remove the contraption in that location from the game. Additionally, if a zombie would smash into a location that is already overrun, it instead smashes into the next location over, in the direction of the workshop door. Sometimes it will not be possible to do one or more of the terrible things listed on a terrible things card. For example, a player cannot choose add two brutes to the board if all of the brute zombies are already on the board. He must make a different choice instead. In order to choose a particular terrible thing, a player must be able to do exactly what the terrible thing says to do. Additionally, a player cannot choose a terrible thing that has no effect. For example, a player cannot choose all zombies in the balcony column shamble when there are no zombies in the balcony column. He must make a different choice instead. If none of the terrible things on a card are possible, then all zombies shamble. In addition to shambling zombies, other terrible things include discarding a specific quantity of part cards, moving one or more progress tokens backward on the blueprints, immediately removing barricade tokens from a location, or taking bite tokens. Getting bitten impedes progress on the contraptions needed to turn back the zombie horde by hindering your ability to work with the other players. When a player has one bite token, he can no longer trade cards with other players and must use slurred speech when talking. With two bite tokens, he can no longer make tinker actions and must grumble his words using barely intelligible speech. With three bite tokens, he can no longer choose his own terrible thing. Before drawing a card from the deck of terrible things, he must hold up one, two, or three fingers. He then draws the card and performs the first, second, or third terrible thing respectively. If a player with three or more bite tokens chooses a terrible thing that is not possible, then all zombies shamble. Additionally, the player can no longer use any words when speaking, only grunts, grumbles, and hand motions. With four or more bite tokens, the player is fully zombie infected. Instead of making a bodge action each turn, the player draws a second card from the deck of terrible things. Once the zombies close in part of a turn is over, the current player makes one bodge action. There are five bodge actions to choose from, but a player can perform only one bodge action each turn. Some bodge actions require the use of part cards. Each part card has three boxes, each corresponding to one of the three bodge actions a part card can be used for. Tinker, Defend, and Repair. The large top box shows the part type that the card can be discarded for when performing a tinker action. To perform a tinker action, the current player must discard a part card matching the next part listed on the contraption card's blueprint. Advance the progress token to cover the part that was just played. Because players need three completed contraptions to win the game, tinker actions should be a top priority. When a player performs a tinker action that completes a contraption, it does more than allow that contraption to be used during push the button actions. It also grants a completion bonus. 
The completion bonus allows that player to draw the listed number of part cards as supplies. When a player draws supplies in this way, he can immediately give any of those cards he wishes to other players, even if they have bite tokens. After resolving the completion bonus, remove the progress token from the contraption and flip the contraption card over to its completed side. Once one or more contraptions have been completed, players can begin making push the button actions. To perform a push the button action, the current player follows the instructions on the push the button box of one completed contraption. Note that the completion bonus from completing a contraption allows the player to immediately push the button, sometimes more than once. Some push the button effects refer to spaces within one space or within two spaces of that location. When counting out distances from a location, spaces adjacent to the current space, including diagonally, are considered one space away. Other contraption abilities affect distances up to two spaces from a location. Well, you'll often want to use your part cards to build your contraptions, fighting off zombies can be just as important to winning the game. To perform a defend action, the current player chooses any one space on the board. He then discards part cards and destroys zombies in that space, matching the zombie types and quantities listed on the part cards discarded. Return destroyed zombies to the zombie pool. To perform a repair action, the current player chooses one location on the board. He then discards part cards and replaces a number of barricade tokens on that location equal to the number of barricade symbols on the cards he discarded. A location cannot exceed its starting number of barricade tokens. Between tinkering, defending, and repairing, players will certainly begin to run out of part cards. That's when it's time to perform the scrounge action. Scrounge actions are very important if you're to have any hope of completing the workshop's contraptions and repelling the zombie horde, as scrounging is the only way to draw cards and zombies keep out outside of completing contraptions. Oftentimes, players will find themselves holding a card their teammate needs for their turn or vice versa. Once per turn during the bodge step, either before or after performing a bodge action, the current player can trade one of his part cards with another player. You cannot give cards away, only trade them on a one-for-one -one basis. If the zombies ever overrun the door location, or if the zombies destroy three contraptions, they win the game. Additionally, if each player has two or more bite tokens, the zombies win the game. If players complete three contraptions before the zombies win the game, then the players are victorious. Now it's your turn to gather your friends and work together to fight off the zombie horde. But remember, whatever you do, don't get bit.